my confusion, operator, or I will reduce yours, about the, <laughs> about the uh, relation between eternal inflation and uh, the duplicate paradox, and therefore uh, the many worlds or the Copenhagen interpretation making it into the internal pot. I, I don't see the connection. The first one to uh, do the calculation was Alexis Starobinsky, and that led to uh, Linde's discovery of, of the eternal inflation mechanism. So the way you get eternal inflation is by coarse graining. In each bubble, you integrate out the sub-horizon degrees of freedom fluctuations, and you end up with a diffusion coefficient that favors large fluctuations. And that, that's where the eternal nature of inflation comes from. If you already coarse grain, I, I really don't understand how you have any room left for the many worlds interpretation and decoherence and stuff like that. So that's question number one. And uh, uh, the second question is, uh, well, it's more a comment than a question. We have discussed that many times before. This uh, talk between eternal inflation and the landscape. Now, we can test mathematically and experimentally within the next five minutes. Mathematically, all we have to do is take the instanton, which is an hyperbolic tent, and uh, put that in the uh, landscape potential and find out the equation is not satisfied. Okay, so let me, I'm not sure what exactly to say to either of those well, questions. Well, we're talking about Kuhlmann de Lucia bubbles. Those are hyperbolic tents. All we have to do is just put them in the equation for the landscape and find out if that should be where equation is satisfied. The answer is no. Well, the, yeah, the, I mean, the Kuhlmann de Lucia solution only applies strictly to a two-well system that it was solved for. Um, and, you know, it's not always a tanch. It depends on exactly, you know, you can, you can come up with numerical solutions and so on to it. Um, so it's, yes, um, but I think it's the assumption that, that we and most people make is that once, you know, that the eternal, that the landscape has a very complicated structure, but it's not clear um, that if you, it seems that if you're in some vacuum for a long time, um, if it's a long-lived vacuum, it will essentially approach to sitter space. If you have one direction um, where the tunneling is fastest, then it makes sense to think about tunneling more or less directly to that other vacuum. You can think about multidimensional well, instantons. Well, that, that, that's the problem. It does not make sense. I mean, uh, it, it's very easy to check mathematically rather than assume. And physically, I can tell you the reason why it doesn't make sense. You have an n-body problem with the landscape. And, and you have many quantum phenomena occurring there. Tunneling is one of them. Tunneling just takes you to the neighbor. Besides that, you'll have multiple scattering. So you'll have all the quantum uh, constructive and destructive interference. All, all the phases of that multiple scattered wave function will add up or, or cancel out, which creates localization of that landscape. Now, that kind of physics is very rich and belongs to n-body problems. It cannot be reduced to a two-body problem. So, I mean, we, we can show what the solution is because condensed matter people have done it, and that will uh, lead me to the experimental test. But uh, uh, it's also, we, we can do it in the reverse. Just take a bubble solution, an hyperbolic tent, and put it on the landscape potential. The landscape potential is a white noise. So it's very easy to check. It only takes a few minutes. And it has not been done. I mean, th there is so much talk of eternal inflation on the landscape for like six years now, and a calculation that takes only five minutes to do has not been done. Now, experimentally, we can also check. Every piece of material can resemble a landscape. A piece of wire is a string of atoms of potential wells. You can put an electron through a piece of wire and find out what happens to it. If tunneling is what happens, then everything in this room should be made up of bubbles. We should be made up of bubbles. We are not. The reason is the rich physics of n-body problem. Well, it, I mean, the, the landscape you get from a complicated molecule or something is quite different because that, I mean, then you're not justified in taking sort of a large, necessarily a large number of degrees of freedom limit and using the techniques of field theory and instantons and bubble no, nucleation exactly, and so on. it's exactly what condensed matter people use. In fact, it, it's identical. The, the only For if, if the system is very large condensed matter system. So I, I certainly agree that it, it is very useful and productive to, to think about other quantum effects that can happen in a complicated potential like this. But I also think that the, I just will be skeptical of your claim that it can be solved in five minutes 
including gravity and so on, if you, it's hard enough to understand what's happening with the, the two well system that we've been studying for, you know, 20 years. It, it poses all kinds of difficult problems just with the two well system. I am skeptical that including the 500 dimensional multi well quantum system with gravity is going to make that easier. That would be great if it did, but I am skeptical that no, it no, I, I didn't claim you can. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't claim you can solve it in five minutes. I, I said you can check in five minutes. Since the claim is already there that the solution is a bubble, just take the bubble solution and put, in, put it in the equation and find out if it's satisfied or not. It, it certainly won't in a multi, it, it, if you just make two fields, the same instanton won't solve it. So it's clear that it won't, but it might still be a useful approximation. Your example with the many worlds with these strings with the Hartle type uh, observation there, you said they were all the same. They were of the same kind. They were not all identical. Your picture showed them as, I just wanted to make that absolutely precise. They're not exactly the same strings. They're all distinct. Well, what do you mean by distinct? Well, in your <laughs> diagram, they showed us this. Well, I'm just saying the other thing because is. Because they're, they're, inf they're infinite strings with, with the same statistical properties. With uh, the same statistical properties, but yeah. you would still be able to tell one apart from another. How? if you looked at them in sufficient detail? Uh, it's not clear, because no matter how big of a string you pick from one, it will exist in the other one. Um, uh, so it, it well, the other thing is, is this not also actually where it comes from originally, from Neville Mott's explanation of why alpha particles make straight tracks in cloud chambers, where you get the, where, uh, and, and there's also John Bell's account, cos, uh, quantum mechanics for cosmologists, where, if you think in terms of just a spherical wave expanding out, you can't understand why it, you, you then in a cloud chamber observe straight tracks. But Mott showed that the mistake is you must think in a multidimensional configuration space. And in that, then, there's all these possibilities present. And within any one of these ones, you will find the alpha particle is obeying the Born rule for small angle scattering. It, it smacks to me of very much the same mm. sort of thing, slightly more refined, Maybe we perhaps. can talk about that after. I'm not familiar with that. Yeah. Um, it was just about the Galilean paradox, and just wanted to understand exactly where that was coming in, because you know there may be a zillion uh, vacuum states in string theory, but it's finite, so you don't have that mm -hmm. counter paradox there. Right. And then with eternal inflation yesterday, you stressed how the slicing could you know, could give you an infinite space, I suppose. Right. But presumably, likewise, you could do the slicing so that it appeared finite. And so again, you, you wouldn't have a counting paradox if you chose the right slicing. So well, is it but there's a whole to family of so that you don't have that paradox. Uh, I think you could. So if you if you want to count the total number of bubbles that form, you'll that'll be infinite, so you'll have the paradox. If you want to count the total number of bubbles formed at some time, mm -hmm. then it's true that that will be finite, uh, if, you know, if you start with a finite region. Um, but it will still crucially depend on what time slicing you choose. Mm -hmm. so, so then it'll be more the second, the domino dilemma, um, rather, than, rather than the Galilean one. Yeah. So you could ask, is there a slicing for which all the paradoxes? Trace K is constant hypersurfaces we heard about. Right, right. So, th so that, that still is an interesting question, whether there's a foliation that is preferred and gives nice answers to this. That, that would be very pleasing. Okay, I'm afraid we've run out of time, and thank you very much.